Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country Homestead. God is good all the time. Welcome to my Medicinal Herbs collaboration. I did manage to gather up a good number of really great channels of people who are already growing their own medicinal herbs. Now, I will be posting links to all the channels participating in the description box. Now please keep in mind that we're all putting our videos up at different days and different times. Um, I'm hoping to get them all out within this week. So some may have theirs up before mine and some will have theirs up after. So just be watching for those and keep checking back. And if you haven't subscribed to any of the channels below, you may want to do that so you don't miss their, their video on this. But I gave them the option to talk about their medicinal herbs however they choose. They can focus on one herb, one topic on one herb, one topic on a bunch of herbs. It totally was up to them. So I'm hoping that each video will be pretty unique. That's my plan. And so I had a hard time deciding, even, even though I decided on this collaboration, I had a hard time deciding what exactly I wanted to focus on because I actually have quite a few videos that I put out right at the end of last summer on some of the medicinal herbs I'm growing. I didn't get to, to them all. I think I did only three or four. And I do plan on doing more this summer as they're in season. And the reason I want to get this out now is some of you are planning your garden, some of you are already starting to plan, and you might want to consider what kind of herbs you want to get started so that you can grow. So I'm just going to roughly cover a few while I'm sewing. Hopefully I can stay focused. And um, you've heard me talk a lot about feverfew and catnip. And um, these are a couple of herbs that are really, really easy to grow. In fact, all the ones that I grow are very easy to grow. <laughs> and, um, but those two in particular are really good for pain and inflammation. They have the other benefits too, but my purpose of growing, for growing them was for those reasons there. Um, feverfew is also good for stomach ailments because it is a bitter, it is naturally good for that. Um, it does have a very strong bitter taste that a lot of people would not be able to handle. I've gotten used to it where I can actually eat the herb right off the plant. I don't enjoy it, but I do it fresh. And then I also make tinctures of it. Um, I found the tincture of the catnip and the feverfew together works amazingly well and doesn't taste quite as bad as the feverfew tincture alone. And uh, so that's a... That's why I'm growing those, and that's why I planted them. Now, there's a lot of herbs and flowers that I'm growing that I initially grew for other reasons and then learned about their medicinal properties later and was thrilled, such as nasturtiums and pansies. I grew those to have some pretty flowers to attract bees and hummingbirds that were also edible to us that I could throw on salads and make some pretty vibrant salads. However, the, all those things have their own medicinal properties that are just really wonderful. Pansies are very good for your skin and your hair. And um, nasturtiums, uh, the, the flowers are very good for your hair and stimulating hair growth. And the leaves are a natural antibiotic that is from what I understand, it's pretty powerful. Now, I have yet to use it as an antibiotic, but I have made a nasturtium leaf tincture, so I've got that on hand if we ever need it for anything. And so it's, one, it's kind of funny because it's one of those things where it's like, okay, if somebody, you almost get excited to get an infection just so you can try it and see if it works. Like the, like the first time I ever got a stung by a wasp in my whole life was this last summer, and I was excited because I finally had an opportunity to, to use the plantain that naturally grows wild and I just let it grow. And a lot of you probably already have it growing and a lot of you probably don't know what it is and you're pulling it up. So I'm gonna insert a picture of the plantain right here and another one right here. There's two different types of plantain, but they both have the same medicinal benefits. Now, I'm thinking the broad leaf, the first photo I showed you, probably has a little bit more. I don't remember for sure, 
But anyway, when I got stung by that wasp, I was obviously, I was outside, I was working in the garden. So I grabbed a plantain leaf and chewed it up and put it directly on that sting. And within minutes, the sting went away and never even left a mark. It was amazing. So um, it's always exciting when I'm actually able to use this stuff. Uh, some other medicinal herbs that I am growing are the Korean hyssop. I was growing anise hyssop, but it just didn't want to come back as well. So I decided to try Korean hyssop and we'll see how well it comes back this year. It's supposed to do better in my more maritime climate and we'll see what happens. So I'm hoping it, it does well. Uh, the the new ones I'm going to be planting this year, and, and if you've been following me, you'll already know some of this, but if you're new or you came here from one of the other channels, <clears throat> you, you won't know this. This will be new news to you, but I will be starting uh, valerian and ashwagandha. Now, I didn't even bother to look up to see if these are things that will grow in my area. I've got to the point when it comes to medicinal herbs, I'm not even gonna bother to see. I'm just gonna give it a try, and I'll try it a few different ways, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, then I'll move on and find another herb. Because I've managed to be able to get herbs to grow here that normally wouldn't people wouldn't think would grow in this area, like the marshmallow. But then again, it is a marsh, right? It is a, it, it is a, it's meant to grow in wet climates or wet areas, but, um, it took me a few tries though to get it. And now I'm going to have marshmallow coming out my ears next year. I got a lot this last year. And that's another very great herb that you should look into. Beautiful flower, nice scent, scent gets very tall and sort of picture to that right here. It has great, the, the whole plant is, is um, got medicinal edible uses. Uh, the root, or at least I know for sure, the root, the flowers, and the leaves. And I, I have yet to use the root because I want, I'm wanting to, my, since my uh, marshmallows are only a couple years old, I'm wanting to get a lot of root built up before I harvest them so I don't harvest too much. But, um, the, the reason we call the confectionery thing marshmallows, because originally was made for the marshmallow plant, because it has gelatinous properties to it, in both, mostly in the root, but also in the leaves. And, um, and then the, the flowers and the leaves are both beneficial to the skin and the hair. So these are things that I include in my homemade um, shampoos and soaps and stuff like that. I have like a herbal blend that I use. I've just got all these great herbs from my garden that are all good for the skin and hair and that's some of the stuff I throw in there. Uh, so there's a lot more properties on all these. I'm not going to go into it now because I don't want to make this video too long. But I do want to talk a little bit about the herbs that I'll be trying since I've already got videos on some of these ones uh, that I've, I've spoke about like the fever few and stuff and you can go back and find those I'll actually link to them right up here um, and I'll be doing more like on the marshmallow and stuff but I want to talk mostly on the ones I will be planting and why I'm going to be planting them and that is the uh, valerian uh, we I was um, you know, just like anyone else, we go through these periods where we have a hard time sleeping. And I made a tincture up a long time ago, a valerian root tincture from root that I bought from the store. And um, I kept forgetting I had it. And then I started having, um, getting really, really stressed out and having a lot of shoulder pain. And the more my shoulders hurt, the more I scrunched my shoulders up. The more I scrunched my shoulders up, the more my shoulders would hurt to the point that I'd wake up in the middle of the night just aching. So I was losing sleep and, you know, from the aching muscles, which was also making me more stressed out. And it was just this vicious cycle. And I thought, I gotta break this. And I need to find a way to relax my shoulder muscles. And sometimes when you, as you learn about herbs, you start to get an idea of, well, if this is good for this, then it's most likely gonna be good for this. Like if you know a herb is bitter, like, dandelion leaves and feverfew, then 
usually you're going to find out it's going to be really good for the digestive system. So I figured if something was, uh, if an herb like valerian helped you relax so that you can sleep, wouldn't it then possibly be a good muscle relaxer as well? So I looked it up and sure enough, that's what I found. And I went ahead and took some one night before I went to bed and just within a few minutes, I felt my shoulder muscles relax and it was such a wonderful feeling because I just could not get them to relax. And I mean, I think I say no matter how hard I tried and maybe that was part of it too because I was always trying, I was always pressing my shoulders down to try to keep from scrunching them up but then it seemed like that almost made it worse. And I slept really good that night. So then I did it again the next night and then I think I did it for off and on for a few days and then eventually I just, I stopped having issues. Now I've noticed lately, I'm starting to, it's starting to build up again. I'm starting to get the tension. So I'll probably take some of that tonight. So anyway, that is why I want to grow my own. Now the herb that I bought, I'll link to that below. It's, so if you want to buy it and try it yourself, it's organic. And I get, I get all my stuff. I usually get it from either Mountain Rose Herbs or Amazon. So I'm going to give you the Amazon link because that's where I bought the Valerian root. Um, but I bought enough to get me through until I, I know to, first I want to make sure my, the Valerian's even going to grow for me. And then I got to give it time to really develop so I can have plenty of root, just like horseradish. I gave it a few years before I really harvested my first horseradish. And um, then the other one is the ashwagandha. And ashwagandha was something that I discovered, oh gosh, maybe it's been about a year. And I started ma ma adding it to our, um, our, my homemade jet fuel latte recipe, which you can find up here. And when I started doing that, I found that it gave me just tons and tons of energy that just I only needed one cup of that, you know, with just a little bit of ashwagandha root in it. And boy, it, I just was energized all day. No more coffee for me. I'm able to do that. And, I, and ashwagandha is an adaptogen. So what that does is anything that's an adaptogen, it helps your body adjust to stress and be able to deal with it. So um, that is why I'm going to try growing the ashwagandha and for myself, that and the valerian root, because anything I know that works for me, I want to try to grow it myself so that I don't have to be dependent on buying it so that I can be more self-reliant when it comes to taking care of my health needs. Now, I know there's a plethora of more great medicinal herbs out there that I'm going to be researching and probably planting in the future. Um, so I'm looking forward to the videos that other people have coming out to see what they're growing and how they use it. Um, I already know what a couple of people are doing and I'm really anxious. So please check those links out in the description box and go visit those channels and see what they're going to talk about. And then also be looking forward in the future. I'll be doing what, lots more medicinal herb videos. Um, I do have some live shows that we did in the past. You can find those in, um, in my live show playlist that about where I talked more on, a, on different medicinal herbs, including valerian root. I have a video on how to make a, a deep sleep tincture using the valerian root and a couple other um, uh, herbs that I grow myself, like the lavender and uh, what else did I put in there? Oh, the licorice root, but I'm not growing that yet. I did start it last year. We'll see what happens. It's not really growing yet. I just got starts last year. So I have to see if they come back. These are all perennials, by the way. Most of the medicinal herbs I grow are perennials. So once you got them established, they're going to just keep coming back. That's, what, that's why medicinal herbs are so great. One of the reasons why and why you should keep, you should try growing your own. All right. So um, check out my other uh, playlist on my medicinal herbs. You can find, I'm, I'm going to try to get all that stuff up here so you can find all that information. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.